staying in the Big 12, I will give you mine. I'm going to be a little more pessimistic. And <laughs> I'm going to look at the TCU Horn Frogs. They have a seven and a half over under. Obviously, two years ago, made it all the way to the college football playoff championship game and got shellacked by Georgia. Then followed that up with a five and seven campaign in 2023. They're sitting at a seven and a half over under, and I'm going to take the under for them yet again this year. I don't think they get to eight wins. Their schedule is, you know, you talk, you highlighted the schedule for Utah as an easy one. TCU has a very tricky, tricky schedule. And, you know, the fact of the matter is last year, a lot of things went wrong for the Horned Frogs. I think they took some transfers that they were hoping would help them out a little bit more. Those transfers maybe didn't pan out as much as they would hope. And obviously the quarterback play took a big step back from where Max Duggan had it in 2022. The defense just really struggled against any offense with a pulse to not give up a ton of points, right? So they, they give up 45 to Colorado in the opener, uh, 41 to Kansas State. They give up 35 to Texas Tech. Um, 69, not nice to Oklahoma. So yeah. they were really struggling at times. And I just don't know that they've done enough in the portal or in their high school recruiting to plug those gaps on the defensive side of the ball. And the offense, if you're asking them to put up 40 points a game with Max Duggan, that was possible with, and Quentin Johnson. But I don't know that they have the guys on offense to consistently do that in a league that's becoming more and more able to defend those types of offenses. So I'm looking at their schedule. They've got two wins off the bat at Stanford and Long Island at home. I think they should easily handle both of those games. Mm -hmm. Then you get into a really tricky three games. UCF with KJ Jefferson. Y'all have heard me on this podcast talk about how I think KJ Jefferson and Gus Malzahn is going to be a matchup nightmare for opposing mm -hmm. defenses this year. Uh, CC just hasn't proven to me that that's going to be an easy game for them. Then you go at SMU and at Kansas back-to-back -back mm -hmm. weeks. And if you want to talk about a couple of offenses that could cause a lot of problems, <laughs> there's a real possibility. I don't think this is this will happen. There's a real possibility they're sitting at two and three after that Kansas game and heading into an absolute must win against Houston or else you're talking about not making a bowl again for the second straight year. But, you know, they, they've got games on their schedule that I think you're penciling in, for me at least right now, at Kansas, at Utah, Oklahoma State, and Arizona. I think though it's safe to say that those four teams are objectively better than, than TCU. And so you're telling me that they then have to sweep the rest of their games. They can lose those four, but they have to sweep the rest of their games if they don't steal one of those mm -hmm. four. That's just really difficult when you're talking about UCF at SMU, Texas Tech at home, a Baylor team that's going to be fighting for, you know, bowl eligibility, potentially a trip to Cincinnati that could be tricky at the end of the year. I just don't see eight wins for this TCU Horned Frogs team this year on paper. Maybe that changes with what we hear in fall camp and what we get out of spring ball. But right now, I'm just not betting on them to win eight games this year. Yeah, they, they feel like a real six or seven to me, right, where they can make a bowl game, but it's kind of one of those kind of lower tier bowl games and, you know, maybe not quite as up for it. But the, the thing for me is I just don't think that they can keep up with the physicality of some of these other teams. I think that when you look at what TCU does defensively, it's really based on speed. There's a lot of stuff based on speed on their defense, and it's, you know, it's worked in the past. And, I mean, you can even go back to their extremely successful season. It worked against Michigan. The problem is what they did against Michigan got put on tape. Georgia showed you what happens when you adjust for it. And, you know, a lot of teams last year showed you what happens when you adjust for it. When you lose all that extra star talent from that team and then you don't replace it, that's where I start to wonder, like, okay, well, what are you doing in the portal? We thought they crushed it in the portal last year, and it just didn't come back together. Um, and I'm I'm not thinking they had as good of a class this year. Um, kind of looking around at some of the guys they're bringing in. They brought in some good players, but I don't see as many difference makers as I saw last year. At least guys that I thought would be difference makers last year. And so I I'm not as optimistic that they're going to have massive success. I'm not as optimistic that they're going to have 
uh, you know, a vastly better team in a conference where I think there's too many teams taking steps forward and kind of raising the bar. I don't think they're doing quite enough. I don't think that they lose seven games again. I think that would be a little bit dramatic. But, um, yeah, I, I think that they're probably about a six or seven win team this year. And, you know, I don't think that they're going to hit their over either. So I think it's a good bet. Yeah, they, they brought in Ken Seals from Vanderbilt. I think that's a depth piece at quarterback. Yeah, and he's, he's solid, this... but he's not a star like game changer. Yeah, and I, I think this is Josh Hoover's team, and he played quite a bit last year down the stretch as they mm-hmm. – Realize that, uh, you know, Chandler Morris wasn't maybe going to work out. And um, he put up some big numbers at times. And I think he took care of the football relatively well. But there were times that I, I, Max Duggan, what he was able to put together two years ago was just magical. And that combined with an opportunistic defense is what gave TCU what they needed to make that run and a whole lot of luck. And I just think that they lo- used about 10 seasons worth of, worth of luck. Yeah. in that one year to get all the way to where they did. Yeah, and it's magic, and so it's worth it, right? It was a great Absolutely. season. I, I would trade that for anything. For oh, yeah, for sure. You, I, I would do that in a in a heartbeat, right? If you make it to the national championship game, even to get stumped, just the fact that you got to live that ride and do that whole thing, yeah, I'll take missing a bowl game the next season. That makes sense. It, it's man, it's just, it, I don't think that they're going to get back to that level quite yet. Still think it's a good program. Still think you can grow the right direction but they're going to have to do a lot more to show me before I believe it's going to be a a tried and true staying power type of program. Gracious. How about that?